All right, thanks for watching. And in a previous video, I have defined a notion of a Cauchy sequence, which are just sequences that get closer and closer to each other. And I have shown that if a sequence converges, then it is Cauchy, which of course raises the question, is the converse true? If a sequence is Cauchy, does it converge? And surprisingly, the answer is no. And consider the following example. So pretend for a second that our universe is the rational numbers. So the real, no real numbers don't exist. We don't know what irrational numbers. And consider the following sequence. Sn, which is 3, 3.1, 3.14, 3.141, etc., etc., in the rational numbers. Now notice the terms of the sequence actually do get closer and closer to each other. Because this is 3, this is 3.14, 3.141, etc., etc. So intuitively, they do get close to each other. But you can also show that this is true because notice after this value, all the terms are at most 0.1 apart. After this term, all the terms are 0.01 apart, etc., etc. So in the long run, the terms become arbitrarily close to each other. Therefore, Sn is actually Cauchy. But surprisingly, Sn doesn't converge in the rational numbers. In Q. And why is that? Because again, remember the rational numbers, they have holes. So it does seem that the terms are closer and closer to each other. But look. If it converges, then it would converge to pi. But we do not know what pi is. It is not a rational number. So in fact, here, the sequence is lost. It seems to get closer and closer, but it doesn't seem to converge. Okay? And by the way, you do see that sometimes in real life when you see a large crowd gathering. So a large people are getting closer and closer to each other, but there's nothing there. They don't look at anything. It's just a random gathering of people. Um, and this would be a Cauchy sequence that doesn't converge. That said, of course, this does not happen in the real numbers because the real numbers are complete. They do not have any holes. So in the real number system, this sequence, this Cauchy sequence, is actually convergent to pi. And in fact, the beautiful thing is, in the real numbers, this is always true. So for the special case of R, Cauchy sequences are convergent. So in that special case, uh, Cauchyness and convergence is the same. And this is what we'll prove today. So theorem, and it's sometimes called completeness of R, R, namely, if Sn is Cauchy, again, if Sn is a Cauchy sequence is R, in R, then Sn converges. And to prove that, it, we do something very interesting because if it's Cauchy, we don't really know what the limit is. So we need some trick that allows us, that does not talk about limits. And that trick is precisely the limb soup squeeze theorem. Because if you look at that theorem a couple of videos ago, it does not mention limits at all. So proof. Suppose Sn is Cauchy. Then, first of all, we have shown that Cauchy sequences are bounded, so we can assume everything is finite. And the goal is just to show 
it was shown that the limb soup of Sn equals to the limb inf of Sn. That's the limb soup uh, squeeze theorem that I call. All right, now, step one, let epsilon be arbitrary. Then, since Sn is Cauchy, what does that mean? It means there is some threshold. So there is capital N such that So for any value bigger than capital M, N, sorry, such that if M and N are bigger than capital N, then Sn minus Sm is less than epsilon. But notice in particular, this implies that the stuff without absolute values, Sn minus Sm is less than epsilon. So Sn is less than Sm plus epsilon. And that's for all, uh, let's go, for all M and N bigger than capital N. Now here's the thing, this is true, so fix M, so this becomes constant, this is true for all N. So in particular, this is true for the supremum of all Sn. So if a number is smaller than a fixed number, then the maximum of all those numbers is also smaller than that fixed number. So now, taking the soup, the soup over n, again n bigger than capital N, because we do need to be after that threshold, we get that the supremum of the Sn, where n is bigger than capital N, is less than or equal to Sm plus epsilon. And now, to get the limb soup, okay, we would like to take capital M, then go to infinity, but this is a little bit of a problem because capital M depends on epsilon, so it's kind of tricky in some sense, but we would like to use a special property of that suprema, because notice, I don't know if it's obvious to you or not, but it's definitely not to me. But um, this supremum is decreasing in capital N. In other words, notice the following. Suppose you have your sequence like that. Okay. And then your sequence goes like that. See, that supremum of Sn where n is bigger than capital N is there, here. But suppose you choose another one, let's say n1, and take the supremum of Sn, where n is bigger than n1. Notice, this is actually smaller than this one. So in other words, this sequence, if you want, depending on capital N, is decreasing. And remember, what is the limb soup? It's just the limit of that sequence. So it's the supremum of Sn, but where n is very big, you see? In particular, no matter which n, capital N we choose, the limb soup will always be smaller than that. And because the original thing is less than Sn plus epsilon, we can actually conclude that the limb soup is also less than or equal to Sn plus epsilon. So just to formalize this, so since, this thing uh, is suprema of Sn, where n is bigger than capital N, is decreasing in capital N, and then with limit, precisely the limb soup. That's how we define it. Limit as capital N goes to infinity. Uh, limb soup of Sn, we get, 
Now rigorously that the limb soup as n goes to infinity of Sn is less than or equal to Sm plus epsilon. So that's already one thing. And then for our next magic trick, we can solve for Sm. So this implies Sm is greater than or equal to the limb soup of Sn minus epsilon. But again, this is true for every m. All m bigger than capital M. So now just take the infimum. You see, if all the values are bigger than 10, the minimum is also bigger than 10. So in particular, the infimum of Sm, where m is bigger than capital M, is greater or equal to the limb soup, as n goes to infinity of Sn, minus epsilon. But now, here we actually have the opposite phenomenon happening. So before, the supremum was decreasing, and now the infimum is increasing. So since infimum is increasing with capital N and with limit being the limb soup, limit. So again, if you want, again, just a little picture. This is your sequence and you're looking at the smallest value. You see here, maybe the smallest value is here, but then after a threshold, the smallest value becomes bigger, and then the limb inf might be somewhere bigger here. So in particular, then, because the infimum is increasing and the uh, limit is limb inf, you actually get that limb inf is bigger than that and it's bigger than that. Mm. Get that the limb inf as n goes to infinity of, of Sm or Sn is actually bigger than this fixed constant, which is the limb soup as n goes to infinity of Sn minus epsilon. But then here's the thing, this is true for all epsilon, and therefore we can just get rid of this epsilon. So. So what we get in the end is that the limb inf as n goes to infinity of Sn is bigger and equal to the limb soup as n goes to infinity of Sn. But then the limb soup by definition is bigger than the limb inf. And therefore, um, therefore both of them are equal. So the limb inf is equal to the limb soup. Sn equals to the limb soup. And finally, I would like to conclude because, again, this is a very important property that in the real numbers, Cauchy sequences converge, and in fact, there's a de general definition. So a space, technically a metric space X, is complete if every Cauchy sequence in X converges. So examples of complete spaces are the real numbers we've just shown, but also actually Rn and even continuous functions, interestingly, with what's called the soup norm. And also kind of not obvious, but even though Z has holes, Z is complete, but examples of 
the incomplete spaces are the rational numbers, which I have just shown. And again, complete spaces are very nice, we'll see. Uh, because again, we want Cauchy sequences to converge. All right, thank you very much.